8 degree here, everything residential and commercial. Behind me we have the project and today is the first day of demo. What's going on everybody? CAC here. This edition has taken place in Gilbert, Arizona. It's an 810 square foot edition. We're adding a garage, a butler's kitchen, and then like a formal dining room. So it's gonna be pretty fun. So let's get into it here. First and foremost, we're gonna start demo. <laughs> so what we're doing is we bring it to a blank slate. You can see the pile of concrete in the back there. We measure with the string lines to see how much rock we need, then we're bringing rock in. And this probably took around 60, actually, excuse me, this took between 75 and 100 tons of rock. Sorry to interrupt the video real quick, guys. Need a big favor. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Small family business, we need your help. Hit that subscribe button. You're going to help us out. Thank you. Okay. We got this compacted here. Now we're going to add a little bit more rock because it's too deep. But check this out. You can kind of see how uneven it is. See that right there? So we have to bring some more rock in. It's definitely a low spot right there. You can see that dip right there. That's what causes cracking in your concrete. So this right here is really perfect. But right here it dips down. We got to fill that in and fill a little bit more in against the house right there and then it'll be perfectly flat. It is extremely vital to have optimal compaction in your dirt. So we're gonna be constantly compacting the dirt anytime we can. We have jumping jacks in the trenches and we have these plate compactors on top. Okay, it's concrete time. Here's what we're working with. 3000 PSI mix with fly ash 3 8 rock. Using 3000 for the pump and uh, fly ash to help lubricate the pump. What we're doing is we have a five inch, first truck, five inch slump, 10 yards and then we're filling up the uh, footer all the way around. Footer's about a two by two, if you're including the slab on top, and we're using these screed boards to help indicate exactly where to screed. Now my roommate's from Australia and he came to help us, so here's a little highlight clip of my roommate. On this build, we are adding an 800 square foot addition, vaulted ceilings. It takes a pretty good foundation for that. It's about 26 yards of concrete. So what they're doing now is we're both loading it and then they'll come in and final finish it. But we're right in the middle of the main pour, so they gotta hurry, get it done quick, and get to the next section, and then tie it all together. So check this out, it'll be very interesting. Okay, got our concrete poured, check it out. Now that our slab is poured, we're having our truss manufacturer come out and he's gonna measure our slab. So we're already in line for the trusses to be built, but now he has to come out and double check the slab measurement. So when doing so, we come out and do our chalk line of where exactly our walls are gonna go from like the inside part of the wall. So we did our layout here and then I'm translating numbers to him and he's gonna come out and double check and verify they're right because ultimately it's on him, not me to do it. But I kind of give inside to inside measurements of where the regular part of the truss is gonna bear. And then you come over here and I've indicated the northeast, southwest, kind of where the walls are at and the location or the orientation. So if I talk to him on the phone, hey, you know, the south wall, west wall, because sometimes people don't know the directions. And then I give other measurements indicating inside to inside. And I called him on the phone and I said, 
hey, just want to relay the message. These are inside to inside, so account for the five and a half inches on the outside, you know, for the two by six walls. So this is it. We're going to get the trusses ordered. We're going to get the material here, and then we're going to start framing. I love framing. Let's turn that country music up a little bit louder. Framing is always a cool part because it really shows the building coming together and developing. You know, a long time it goes without framing, and now we're framing. However, we have Nathan boots on the ground at the job site right now. Let's hear from him. Nathan Gray here coming to you on a nice Wednesday morning. Got the crew here with me framing out the addition. You guys were watching the previous video of us finishing the concrete here below, but now we have the demo of our existing house. And then if you look around us, we're going to be tying these walls into our house. The last two days we were framing this out, Christian, myself, and the help of Joe. We got our walls up for the most part here. We're going to have some openings here for garages. You can see our beam for the doors above it. This side that you're standing in here is going to be a garage storage room. And then come with me here. You can see this red line here. This is going to be our butler's pantry, butler's kitchen. And then this is going to open into the formal dining room here on the left side of this wall. So as you can see, we got the walls on the east side framed out. And what we're working on now is we're demoing the current um, OSB plywood here of what they had for the soffit of their older house on the stucco. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie these walls and top plates into the existing house. Look at this big wall we're installing. It's about a 20 foot slider will fit in there. Now it's optional if you want to put a slider or shades in, but uh, look at that, it's beautiful with four windows up above. Absolutely magnificent. Here's kind of what it looks like after we're done framing. Now it's time for sheathing. We're using 7 16 10 footers. You can only get that at the lumber yard to uh, wrap this whole building. And we added about six windows to this entire build from the blueprints. The way we set trusses is a little unorthodox to the way other people set trusses. They usually throw them up one or two at a time. What we're doing is we're going to throw five or six up at a time. We're bracing all of them with boards cut at 22 and a half, which Joe is doing right here. And then we're bracing all between the trusses so our trusses can stay 24 on center. And we have runners like two by sixes that run underneath and on the sides. So when the crane shows up, it's little time we have to use or pay this crane guy because they're charges per time so here we go we lift it up one section at a time then we go to the next section and that's pretty much how you do it here's the quick time lapse of it and uh, it's super important to stay away from the load Nathan's getting pretty close but he's not underneath it so yeah you want to stay away from underneath it or like the drop zone because that's the quickest way to suicide yourself not even kidding but uh, we get the uh, trusses in place and then I'll crawl up there and we'll nail gun and attach them. But you can see the two by fours that are running horizontal. Those are braces holding it from tweaking or tipping over. Once the trusses were in, we put all the hardware, hurricanes, all the hold downs, everything in place, we got them in place. We sheathed everything, got our soffit rocking and rolling, and then actually dried our roof in. Okay, so this is part one. Thank you guys for tuning in. We have part two coming out. Lad, Stelco, drywall, the finishes is all going to be on part two. You'll see the final product. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, once again, leave a comment. I'm there. I'm the one answering the questions. I can answer anything you want to the best of my abilities. We're very busy, though. But thank you guys so much. We'll see you on the part two.